Humanity has always been a builder. It is in our very nature to create, to innovate, to reach for something just beyond our grasp. For millennia, we have gathered together. We have built homes, villages, and then cities. These sprawling collections of human ingenuity have been the epicenters of our culture, our commerce, and our dreams. But they were not always in balance with the world that sustained them. For a time, our creations grew at the expense of nature. Steel, concrete, replaced soil, leaf. The hum of machines drowned out the song of birds. We looked at what we had made and, honestly, felt a profound sense of loss, a disconnection from our planetary home. Yet, a change was coming. A quiet revolution of thought. Could our cities breathe? Could they become living things once more? The first crucial step was what we now call the Great Greening. It was a global movement, a collective promise to reclaim our urban landscapes for life. It started small, a rooftop garden here, a vertical farm there. Communities began tearing up disused asphalt planting native flowers and trees in its place. Old abandoned motorways, once arteries of pollution, were transformed into lush green corridors. These greenways became the new lifelines of the city. They connected neighborhoods, providing clean air, shade, a home for countless species of insects and birds. The change was profound. It was visible from space. Architects and urban planners worked hand in hand with ecologists and botanists. Rediscovering water harvesting and soil regeneration, augmenting them with modern technology. Every building, every public square was designed with a dual purpose, to serve people and contribute to the surrounding ecosystem. The city's lungs returned, filtering air, soaking storm water, cooling streets, and healing minds. The Great Greening laid the foundation for everything that was to come. As our cities grew, they could not only grow outwards, they had to grow upwards. The skyscrapers of the 21st century were a different breed from their predecessors. Um, they became arcologies, living, breathing ecosystems in their own right. These vertical forests pierce the clouds, their facades a cascade of trees, shrubs, and flowering plants, a vertical landscape that changes with the seasons. These towers are feats of ecological engineering. Their green skins are functional living systems. The thousands of plants produce oxygen, absorb carbon dioxide, and filter dust, creating a microclimate of remarkable purity. Balconies are gardens home to fruit trees and vegetable patches. The buildings host a surprising diversity of wildlife. Birds and butterflies hundreds of meters above the ground. Energy is a marvel here. Transparent solar glass powers life within, while silent wind turbines harness skyborne currents. Send excess back to the city's smart grid. Life in these vertical cities blends urban convenience and natural immersion, communities in the clouds. They prove that we can live in the sky and still have our feet planted in the living world. Reaching for the stars from a garden. While some looked to the sky, others turned to the great, unexplored frontier, the oceans. Rising sea levels spurred one of the most audacious innovations, floating cities. These are permanent, self-sustaining communities, drifting gently on the currents. They glitter on the horizon, rising and falling with the sea, powered entirely by clean energy, harnessing tides, waves, and the sun, and producing abundant fresh water. Semi-submersible structures bring stability, Modular design lets them grow and adapt over time. Below, foundations become reefs, 
attracting marine life and aiding coral restoration. Residents travel by silent water taxis or stroll across elegant bridges. Children learn marine biology by observing living seas below their feet. These cities are not an escape, but a deeper engagement with the planet. They represent humanity's ability to adapt, to innovate, and to live in balance with Earth's most powerful and vital systems. As twilight descends, another facet of 2125 reveals itself. These are the AI-managed cities where data flows as constantly as the sky traffic above. At night, they are a breathtaking spectacle of light and motion. Holographic advertisements shimmer like digital auroras. To inform and entertain, the Civic Minds, a decentralized network, conducts this urban orchestra. It manages sky and ground traffic and the distribution of energy and resources, anticipating needs and adjusting in real time. Waste eliminated, congestion eradicated, a new level of efficiency. It safeguards well-being, detecting and neutralizing pollutants before they spread. Emergencies are met with breathtaking speed. Swarms of small bots keep the city whole and healthy. Not a machine-run world, but one where AI enhances human experience, beauty, efficiency, connection. The symbiosis of human creativity and artificial intelligence makes life more beautiful, more efficient, and more connected. In our quest for new ways to live, we looked not only up and out, but also down. In regions of harsh climate or where preserving the surface mattered, humanity built downwards. These are the subterranean cities, geoscapes, light-filled habitats carved into the earth. They exist in harmony with geology, insulated from the extremes above. The great challenge, bringing light, solved by sunpipes and deep light wells. Ceilings diffuse and choreograph light, bright noon to soft twilight, preserving natural rhythms. Forests and waterscapes thrive beneath the surface. Geothermal power provides clean, constant energy and comfort. Ending the era of furnaces and AC, water cycles with near-perfect efficiency. Food grows in stacked farms without using surface land. Life underground is peaceful. Togetherness flourishes around central halls. Above, chaos. Below, tranquil stability. The ground level of our cities, once choked with traffic, has been given back to people and to nature. The skies are now filled with a constant, silent, graceful ballet of movement. No traffic jams, no blaring horns, no pollution. The vehicles, sky pods and gliders are sasa. Are sleek, aerodynamic, and clean electric. Many are autonomous, summoned by voice or thought, guided by the city's central AI. Safe distances maintained, paths constantly optimized. Pods offer sweeping vistas of gardens in the sky and parks below. A structured, multi-layered network. Local lanes below, express lanes aloft, and dedicated channels for cargo. Travel becomes serenity. A daily moment of quiet awe. This new mobility changes how we perceive distance and time, connecting peaceful, beautiful cities. The buildings of 2125 are dynamic, intelligent structures that respond to their world. Homes and offices have become living partners in our daily lives. Spaces reconfigure to match our rhythm. Subtle biometrics guide lighting, climate, and soundscapes. A kind of caring guardian in the background. Buildings harvest energy and water, then share with neighbors via the smart grid. Our homes and workplaces are active, intelligent nodes in a vast urban network. The breathtaking beauty and flawless function of our cities are maintained by a unique partnership. 
small insect-like drones pollinate, monitor plant health and perform microscopic pruning. Larger robots prune, plant and compost, guided by ecologists and horticulturalists. A human designer can orchestrate the planting of a million trees across a dozen districts. Maintenance teams span sky to sea, keeping energy harvesters and reefs in prime health. Preventative continuous care has ended catastrophic failures. This collaboration frees humanity. It elevates us toward creativity, design, community, and care. The cities of 2125 are not built by machines. They are built by imagination.